Hello and welcome to an episode that deals with grain size scale of clastic sedimentary rocks and the procedures of grain size measurement. I am Professor Parthapotim Chakravarti from Department of Geology, University of Delhi. Today, we will discuss about the grain size scales and their applications. Also, the procedures used for measurement of sizes of different grade that will be discussed today. After studying this module, you shall be able to know about grain size scales of plastic sediments, necessity of having grain size scale, learn about different grain size measurement procedures, use of different physical laws in grain size measurement and also you will be able to understand the intricacies in grain size measurement, advantages and limitations of different measurement procedures. Now, let us start with the introduction section of it that is grain size, what is the meaning of grain size? Grain size represents a fundamental character of plastic sedimentary rock and one of the most important property for description of these rocks. Sizes of plastic grains reflect their weathering and erosional history. Besides providing idea about their transportation motive, that is whether they are transported as bed load, saltation or suspension. By the time grain size, normally what we mean is the grain diameter. This is true when the grain is perfectly spherical. However, most grains in nature are non-spherical and that generates most relevant question that what is the representative diameter for a non-spherical grain. To resolve this question, the concept of nominal diameter is proposed. What is nominal diameter? The nominal diameter of a grain is the diameter of a sphere that has equal volume as that of the grain. Again in practice, we are seldom in a position to measure volume of each grain of a rock and therefore, use indirect method for measurement of any grain. If a grain resembles a triaxial ellipsoid, we measure its long axis that is A, intermediate axis that is B and short axis that is C for further use of data. As in nature, grain size of sediments vary widely that is it can vary from clay size which is less than 0.002 mm in diameter to boulder size which is more than 25 centimeter in diameter. So, the necessity was always failed to categorize grains in terms of their size scale. So, this size scale necessity that gives to rise to the different kinds of grain size scales which we will be discussing now and start with the wooden Wentworth scale. Now, this scale is proposed by wooden in 1914. The scale divides consecutive classes of grain sizes in millimeter scale by multiples of 2 on higher side and decreases by multiple of half on the lower side. You can see the scale as is shown here that there are boulder, cobble, pebble, granule, sand, silt and clay. All are divided in different scales in the millimeter that is any size of grain which is more than 256 millimeter, we call it a boulder. Now, come on to the sand that what is a sand that is a size that is between 2 to 1 to 1 by 16. I want to harp on on this point that sand is essentially a size, it is nothing to do with whatever its composition and this should be borne in mind by you that sand is always a size, sealed is a size, pebble is a size, nothing to do with its composition. Now, See this figure here, it is demonstrated that how the wooden Wentworth scale size is transformed into the phi scale. As you can see the all the size ranges in the wooden Wentworth scale, they are can be transformed as a power of 2. So, 2 to the power 8, 2 to the power 6 and then the transform, what is the definition of the phi scale? The phi scale is the negative of logarithm of the millimeter scale diameter with the base 2. So, if I transform it with the log with the base 2 that clearly transforms into a positive round integer that is the aim of the phi scale and that the different power of 2 with the negative sign attached to it is transformed to a positive integer in the phi scale that is demonstrated in this figure. As commonly available grain sizes in nature falls in fine size category that is sand to clay 
and their class interval comes in fraction following the scale. So, computations became very cumbersome in early days in absence of any high speed computational facility. This gave birth to another grain size scale which is referred as phi scale. Now, what is phi scale? It is also referred to as the Crumben scale and what we talk about the Crumben scale that is proposed by Crumben in 1934 and devised the scale that is referred to as phi scale. So, phi scale is minus log d to the base 2 where d is the diameter of a grain in millimeter and the use of 2 as the base of the logarithm allowed direct conversion of wooden's grade scale to the Crumben phi scale. Also inversion of sign that allowed transformation of the fractions to positive round integers thereby making the computations much easier for the finer grains that is sand, silt or clay. So, the conversion of wooden uh, went to our scale to the Crumben phi scale that becomes very easy. Now, the measurement of different grain sizes, how we really measure the different grain sizes. The easiest of that is for the gravel and the sand size. The measurement of sand and gravel grains are done by means of mechanical sieving. Sieves are screens of standard size and specified by the American Association of Testing Materials what is referred to as the ASTM. Opening of screens increase uniformly in multiples of root 2 following size grades of Wentworth size scale starting from an opening of 0 0.0029 inch or 200 mesh what we refer as. For size measurement a bank of sieve is taken with downward decreasing opening or the mesh size. Sediment with measured weight is kept on the topmost sieve and then the sieve bank is mechanically or electrically shaken. Depending on the size of the grains, the sediment get distributed among the sieves used. Grains larger than the sieve size will remain on the sieve and grains with smaller size pass on to the sieves further down. By weighing fraction of sample lying on each sieve, a grain size distribution curve is constructed. The lower limit of sieve analysis is 0 0.04 to 0 0.03 mm. Because the grains finer than their size show large amount of cohesion and do not allow measurement of individual grain by this method. Figure 1 shows the bank of sieves with decreasing opening size downward. Now, depending on number of sieves used and their respective opening sizes the original sediment sample will get divided into a number of size fractions on sieving. Now, how do we do it by the silt and the clay size fraction? As discussed the sediments of this size fraction cannot be measured by the sieve analysis because of their high cohesive character because you cannot separate out individual grain because of their cohesiveness. In lieu the measurement of size for these sediments are done through number of other methods most of which deal with the settling velocity of the sediment grain in liquids following the Stokes law. Now, what Stokes law says? According to the Stokes law when the settling velocity of the grains falling through a uniform solution the definition of uniform solution is that a solution at which density is same at all depth levels is called a uniform solution. The velocity is remains constant that means, the resistance to the movement that is friction which acts upward balance the force of gravity on the grain which acts downward. Now, in the figure 2 you can see that how the forces act on a falling sediment grain. For a grain settling with uniform velocity the downward force of gravity balance upward frictional force. The equation clearly shows you that the left hand side that is basically the frictional force we are talking about and the right hand side is the gravity at pull that is operative on the grain. So, the velocity what you get that is 2 by 9 mu that is the uh, viscosity of the fluid the g the acceleration due to gravity the r is the radius the, the square of that radius and del uh, uh, in nu that is basically the density difference between the grain and the liquid. 
So, that is how we can get r is the radius of the sediment grain that is measured. From the relation it can be noticed that the settling velocity proportionally varies with the radius of the grain that means v proportional to the r square as the other parameters that is the density difference, the viscosity all are constant between the grain and the liquid. For settling through water the relation becomes that the log of velocity that is 2 log r where r is the diameter plus c is a constant. This relationship applies well for grains smaller than 0.1 millimeter in diameter but with increase in grain size that is between 0.1 to 0.5 mm, the settling velocity increases and turbulence develops around the grain. This settling velocity of such relatively larger size grain varies proportionally with square root instead of the uh, uh, square of the radius, it is a square root of radius of the grain. However, measurement of settling velocity of each grain is also not a practicable idea and hence attempts were made to overcome the difficulty in some indirect way by use of hydrometer or sedimentation balance. Other methods which are also in use in recent times include refraction or dispersion of light through suspensions of sediment which we call the scattering of uh, or use of x-ray instead of uh, uh, light. Now, one major procedure which is very commonly in use that is the hydrometer, how it operates. A suspension of sample is created with a mixer in a cylinder, so that at time t there is an even distribution of grains in the solution and density of solution is same throughout the cylinder. A hydrometer will float in the solution and register density of the solution on a scale on the upper part of the tube as you can see in the figure 3. If the suspension is allowed to stand for a time t, then the coarser grains will be settled there. Now, you can see figure 3 that what is the operational procedure of a hydrometer. Note the change of sub uh, in the degree of submergence of hydrometer with the passage of time that is from T0 to T1 that is in a solution with time depending on the change of density with the settlement of the coarser grains the hydrometer is getting submerged more and more. So, the larger grains that will settle in the bottom of the cylinder at the level at which the bulb of the hydrometer is floating, the largest of the grain sizes already must have been settled by the time you pass from T0 to T1 and that will result in the decrease in the density of the solution. And this reduction in density of solution gets registered by further submergence of the hydrometer and recorded in the scale at the upper part of the tube. By taking successive readings of the density, we plot a density variation curve with respect to time. Since density reduction is a function of settling velocity, the density variation curve can be calibrated as a grain size distribution curve. In case the sediment contains a large clay fraction, the use of centrifuge is commonly done and that may be a more desired option. The acceleration term g in the Stokes law increased in the centrifuge which can be calculated from the velocity of rotation and length of the rotating arm. Now, another technique which is commonly used that is sedimentation balance. Now, in this method sediments suspended in a solution in a cylinder fall through the water column and settle on a balance pan kept at, at any depth level within the cylinder. The balance pan is kept connected with a wave meter. With passing time more and more sediment will get settled on the pan and the increasing weight of the pan get recorded in the wave meter. The increase in weight is plotted against time which indicated which indicates suspension settlement from the solution as a function of time. This gives a direct cumulative curve that can be calibrated to give a grain size distribution curve. Now, you see figure 4 which illustrates how the sedimentation balance is used for measurement of increase in weight with respect to time and therefore, cumulative grain size distribution curve is plotted. However, settling velocity of particles depend also on their shapes. 
a spherical grain settles faster than a non spherical grain of same mass. Hence, measurement of size for non spherical grains through sedimentation balance may not yield same result as that of the sieving method. Now, uh, the grain size measurement in rocks, the grain size measurement in sedimentary rocks that what we are referring is not a unconsolidated sediment, but it is a consolidated hard sedimentary rock. You cannot do all the earlier procedures when you are measuring a grain from a sedimentary rock. It is done in thin section by use of microscope. However, it is always difficult to measure the fine fraction that is fine silt and clay in this method. One major question in this method is the sectional effect that is under thin section how we measure the diameter and that the diameter of a grain will depend on the relative orientation of the grain and the cut, cut section on which thin section is made and hence in most cases we do not get the greatest diameter. With spherical grains it is not a problem because you can always get the it will be diameter will be equal on all the sides, but the in case it is a non spherical then the statistical expression that express the relation between the real diameter d and the observed diameter d 0 that is the d equal to that is d real is equal to 4 by pi into d 0. However, in practice we do not give this correction to measured grain sizes from a rock as sectional effect on all grains of a rock make no change on their relative sizes. That is, that is all we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed this session. See you again till then. Thank you and Namaskar.